So I saw this study from every major crash from the past 23 years. This was a very bad day. And that is the largest single day point loss ever. Do you think 52 week lows can be used as a trading indicator? So when I took a closer look, I noticed this weird pattern. So I asked Julia Spina, the researcher who put this data together, what it all meant. When sell offs tend to happen, like with uh, the 2010 flash crash, mm -hmm. the 2008 recession with 2020, when sell offs tend to happen, when you have these really big down moves in the market, they tend to be clustered together. They tend to all kind of happen at the same time. And the phenomenon that we usually attribute this to is something called herding. herding. So herding, like when you herd sheep and all the sheep tend to move together. Okay. Um, it's something that we use when we describe like avalanches or neural cascades in the brain. But when investors kind of simultaneously freak out, like there's a big down move in the market, everybody gets nervous. Everybody sells off at the same time, which makes the sell off worse, which makes investors even more nervous, which makes them sell off more. This kind of cascade or this kind of avalanche is something that we see in markets, you know, rarely, but when they do happen, you know, they, they kind of suck. But those patterns are just the start. This week, I learned a bit more about how traders and options traders can use this data to actually get a leg up in the market. Is there a way we can kind of describe this in math? For sure, yeah. So there's a bunch of different metrics that we can use to describe the speed or the severity of a sell-off. Um, but one that's pretty easy to find and even appears on the Tastyworks platform is something called a 52-week lows. Mm. Basically, if an underlying has a down move and gets pretty close to its minimum in the past year, its minimum price in the past year, it might appear on the 52-week low list. And yeah, usually when a you know an underlying hits a new 52-week low because of a down move, there's a really high probability with SPY, there's actually like a 74% chance of this happening, that it's going to hit a new 52-week low um, within the next seven days. So again, because these large moves tend to cluster together, we can measure a lot of these, you know, really, you know, a lot of 52-week lows being surpassed in a really short period of time. And those typically happen during sell-offs. So Julia, I don't use 52-week lows very often and I don't have much experience with them, but if I wanted to add that to my toolbox, how could I do so? So we did a pretty interesting study on this actually um, a couple of days ago. We looked at contracts open when the down move set a new 52-week low and contracts open when the SPY's IVR had to be over 30. We usually don't make assumptions around price reversion or we don't usually adopt a contrarian approach except for Tom over at Tasty. Um, so, but you could use 52 week lows if you wanted to trade a little bit more specul speculatively or for market awareness. So I started off by going to the watch list and selecting 52 week near low. And as I clicked that, I was looking for a cheaper underlying so that I can maybe sell an undefined risk strategy. I wanted to kind of sell a naked call in an underlying, but it has to be cheaper so it doesn't take up too much buying power. And I was looking at the FC. And if we go to the daily chart on VFC, it's sitting at or near its 52 week lows. I mean, over here in December, it hit a lower point at around $24. And right now we're sitting at around $26. So we're still we're still near its 52 week lows. So if we go to the options chain, I mean, we could go out to March for 42 days to expiration or we could go here for March 17th, but we'll just have to manage our position a little sooner. If we did that, we could sell pretty much an at the money call for 80 cents. Uh, we could do something like that. And if I, let's go look at 42 days to expiration, what we could do, or maybe, maybe we'll go a little further out in time and we'll collect a little less, but maybe sell that, maybe sell the 29 strike instead of, instead of selling the at the money in the March. So we'll do that instead and see if we get filled here. The pop is 77% and the buying power is just 330 bucks. So it's not too bad. Um, and this is an undefined risk strategy. So I'll be watching out for that. So we got filled right away in VFC. Because, like I said earlier, these big down moves tend to cluster together. And because usually when an underlying hits a new 52 week low because of a down move, there's a really high chance that it's going to hit another in a really short period of time. We can sort of use 52 week lows as a way to look for underlyings that might be about to sell off or might be pretty far in a sell off. So if we want to sort of buy the sell off and go, you know, bearish on the underlying, we can maybe use 52 week lows and some of the price history to speculate on that. Or if we want to be more of a contrarian and we see that something is near a 52 week low and it's already sold off a lot you know recently like ung is a pretty good example of this in today's market then we can maybe be a little bit of a contrarian again in a speculative way and maybe go bullish on the underlying and assume it's going to revert in terms of like using 52 week lows you can use it uh, to develop a sense of market awareness to maybe look for things that are you know pretty you know about to sell off or you know things that you might sell, uh, assume might sell off more um, but as far as options trading goes um, 52 week lows as we've 
studied them actually don't work very well as an options indicator for short premium by themselves. And that's partially because, or that's mostly because 52 week lows are really rare. It's pretty rare for an underlying to hit a 52 week low or a new one. That happens for SPY about maybe like 1% of the time. So because this happens so few times with SPY about 1% of the time, like Julia was saying, it might not be wise to only wait for these opportunities because there's other high IV opportunities in the market that you could be taking advantage of. And that is opportunity cost. So as a short premium indicator alone, it doesn't work super well, but can give you an interesting thing to pay attention to in the market. So we actually do daily studies like this on Tasty Live called Market Measures. So be sure to subscribe and click here to watch our study on rolling trades.